holy yellow spandex, Batman. I'm Andrew, and on this week's episode, we're looking at the boy wonder who puts the kick in Sidekick. The first Robin and eventual Nightwing, Richard Dick Grayson. He's made some questionable fashion choices over the years, but can you blame him? The dude was raised by the Batman. Stuff your advice, Batman. You and your stone cold heart. You don't know how I feel. How could you? Still, he's become an icon in his own right. So today, we're bringing you the evolution of Dick Grayson. We start, as always, with the comics. For the first year of his career, Batman was a grim and gritty solo act, but co-creators Bill Finger and Bob Kane wanted to lighten up their dark night. A young sidekick would make him more appealing to kids, and more importantly, give the world's greatest detective someone to talk to while he's hunting for clues. Holy false imprisonment! Robin was introduced as the sensational character find of 1940, and his youthful enthusiasm was a perfect contrast for the experienced, angsty caped crusader. His name and swashbuckling attitude were inspired by Errol Flynn's The Adventures of Robin Hood, which also provided the slightly medieval style of his first costume. The young acrobat's colorful uniform was the polar opposite of the black and gray bat suit. With green chainmail trunks and pixie boots, a shirt colored red, just like the birds of the same name, and a teeny yellow cape to complement his partner's dark, flowing cloak. The original Robin costume went unchanged for 44 years, and as Dick gradually aged, it started looking a bit ridiculous. His Earth 2 counterparts had moved on to grown-up costumes, but the real Dick was still trapped in the same uniform he wore when he was eight years old. God damn. The New 52 retconned the Robin suit to be a little more practical with a full body red and green outfit to replace the skimpy classic. But Robin is just a relic of Dick Grayson's past, and after four decades in the shadow of the bat, he finally established his own identity as Nightwing. In the 80s, Marf Wolfman and George Perez solidified the Teen Titans as one of DC's top super teams. Maybe we ought to show him who he's up against. He's totally gonna freak this time. The new Teen Titans formed the basis for all Titans media to follow, from the stellar 2000s cartoon to the upcoming live action series. It introduced characters like Cyborg, Raven, my favorite, and Starfire, and brought some much needed character development to their leader, Dick Grayson. After realizing he was no longer the bouncing boy wonder that he pretended to be, <gasps> Dick hung up his green booties and created an identity all his own. Well, not entirely all his own. Nightwing was actually inspired by a Silver Age Superman story, where Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen fought crime under the aliases of Nightwing and Flamebird. Their costumes were nothing to write home about, but even the height of 60s Super Cheese was more stylish than what George Perez whipped up for Dick's debut as Nightwing. You'd think he'd want to leave the garish colors of his Robin costume behind, but his original Nightwing suit was just as outrageous, with a bright yellow feathers on baby blue motif topped off with a hard, deep V and the most popped of collars. Dick got a makeover at the beginning of the Nightfall storyline, with a streamlined version of the Perez suit that traded in the gaudy disco design for a rad 90s mullet. Oh, that's a righteous fucking mullet. Mm. After Bane broke the bat, Dick wore a badass new uniform designed by future Black Panther artist Brian Stelfreeze. The new suit added Eskrima sticks to Dick's arsenal, tamed the mullet into a much more manageable ponytail, and simplified the older design into a single blue wing that extended to his fingertips. This look lasted until he donned the cape and cowl in Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin for the first time. After the New 52 reboot, Dick switched things up with a red color scheme and Batman-style gauntlets, before going back to blue for his current costume. It's got a slightly thinner logo and a lighter face mask, but the most important elements are still front and center, and by that, I mean behind. Nearly 80 years after his creation, Dick has become an unlikely sex symbol, and who would have thought it with a name like Richard? As a subversion of the male gaze mandated poses that plague women's superheroes, artists began to draw Nightwing with the same exaggerated objectified style. So, you know, when you see a woman on the cover of her own comic book and she's showing her butt, Dick Grayson is doing it too. And today, Dick Grayson's butt has taken on a life of its own with an entire fandom devoted solely to his gorgeous glutes. Talking about that bat butt. Even as a plainclothes cop or secret agent, Dick's butt always steals the show, but outside of the idealized world of comic books, Grayson has also left an impression in live action. 
Robin first appeared on the big screen in two 1940s serials, and while the suit was fairly accurate to the comic books, the production values and lackluster casting made it look like something that he bought at Party City. In the 60s TV series, Burt Ward brought a campy charm to the then iconic character. Holy Merlin the Magician! It's it for a shock! But even at the tender age of 19, he still looked a little old to be wearing the classic costume, which is why he wore the flesh-colored tights to avoid the pesky problem of shaving his legs. Still, network censors at the time had a problem with the tight spandex, leading to heated battles over Dick's bulge. Don't be put off by them, ma'am. Under this garb, we're perfectly ordinary Americans. Robin sat out of the 89 Batman film, but he was originally planned to appear in Batman Returns. Marlon Wayans was cast to play Dick Grayson. Holy guacamole, Batman! And despite being cut from the crowded movie, he still gets residuals to this day. Good for him. For Robin's blockbuster debut in Batman Forever, Leo DiCaprio was actually considered for the role, but he turned it down after just one meeting with director Joel Schumacher. Instead, he cast 25-year-old Chris O'Donnell as the boy wonder. Schumacher's bat nipples and molded rubber should have been a dream for Dick Grayson's superfans, but O'Donnell never sold me on the role. Holy rusted metal, Batman! Huh? You're grown! It's all metal! It's full of holes, you know? Holy! Although his costume was actually pretty cool. It was based on Tim Drake's modernized uniform, designed by Neil Adams with long green tights and black cloak, replacing the bare legs and canary yellow cape. This would be the template for most modern Robins, but Tim deserves an episode of his own, and we still got a lot of Grayson to gab about. So, wait for it. In Batman and Robin, Dick returns with a new uniform that's essentially a black and red version of his Nightwing suit from the comics. He's still referred to as Robin, and he's still got a big ass cape, but this is the closest we come to seeing his other identity in live action. And before you ask, no, I do not count Joseph Gordon-Levin as Robin. That was a really shitty way to try to incorporate him, and it just it doesn't work. You should use your full name. I like that name. Robin. Thanks. It's not a middle name. It's not a middle name. And even if it is your middle name, like, just, 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 fuck, just fuck off. Move on. Robin will return in the upcoming Titan series, and from what we've seen so far, his suit looks like an elaborate armored version of the classic red and green costume, along with Tim Drake's black and yellow cape. It might be a little bulky for someone raised as a trapeze artist, but I'll withhold my judgment until I see it in action. In the meantime, let's wrap up with a quick look at Dick Grayson in cartoons. Robin stuck close to his comic book design in early animated outings like the Filmation Batman show and Super Friends. And in 1992, Dick Grayson appeared in the animated series, once again wearing Tim Drake's uniform. After the series changed styles, Dick was replaced by the younger Robin and made his TV debut as Nightwing. What are you doing here? Oh, just following a pattern of obsessive behavior instilled in me at an early age. Bruce Timm's minimalistic take on the blue and black 90s design, along with a maximalist mullet, was a lot more stylized than Bat fans were used to. But it was nothing compared to the anime makeover he received courtesy of Glenn Murakami's Teen Titans. The art style made expert use of Robin's expressive eye mask, and while it was never explicitly confirmed to be Dick Grayson, the series drops a lot of subtle hints throughout. Robin? I haven't used that name in a long time. Call me Nightwing. Robin wore variations of his Teen Titans costume through subsequent series like The Batman and the chibi spin-off Teen Titans Go, while The Brave and the Bold paid tribute to several different eras of the Boy Wonder's career. Meanwhile, Young Justice dropped the green entirely for an all-red look before Dick graduated to an armored-up Nightwing in season two. Let's just say that after running this team for a year, I'm peckish for a little action. Sadly, there's just not enough time to cover or watch, frankly, the dozens of straight-to-DVD animated films featuring Dick Grayson, but I do want to give a shout-out to the Lego Batman movie for giving us a very different take on the Boy Wonder. Yeah, and I already have a catchphrase. Tweet, tweet on the street. Hard pass. And a song. Fly, Robin, fly. Harder pass. Elf slide. <laughs> With his red hair and glasses, the Lego Robin is a spitting image of Carrie Kelly from The Dark Knight Returns, one of the many, many, many Robins inspired by the original. But like Jason Todd, Tim Drake, Stephanie Brown, Damian Wayne, and everyone else who's worn the red and yellow, they all owe a huge debt of gratitude to the brave boy wonder who led the way. 
Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Which Robin should we cover next? Should we talk about Jason Todd and his time as the Red Hood, Tim Drake's frankly revolutionary Robin, or do you demand Damian Wayne? Leave a comment, let us know. Please subscribe to Now This Nerd, and if you see Dick Grayson, don't take that butt for granted.